So to understand better the Linux file system, we have to do a little bit of a time travel. And we we'll like to, you know, move to move forward from a time period when we, you know, have some punch cards. We, you know, put punch those cards which are, you know, consisting of quotes, maybe some logic and having some sort of data or information which we want to feed into the computer. And then afterwards, we're also getting the output in the form of these, you know, cards. We're getting these linear outputs in, you know, like really long printable format of the lists in, in you know, in those paper sheets. So this is a time period when you know computers started getting advanced, uh, getting advances, and they you know started having more and more computation power. But more on that, we will you know starting also getting more and more information, per se, which means the data. And to handle this, those amount of data, we need you know better you know system architecture to handle these sort of complexities of data to be able to perform more and more complex qu queries on these data to be able to you know perform a you know entirely different sort of logics which wouldn't be able to we we wanted to be able to do it for a, from i think our entire history of human race so uh, things are getting improved on the you know physical hardware in computer software and more on that since this linear way of you know doing computation is quite infeasible it's not you know efficient if i say it and so what we have to do is to we have to improvise on a lot of levels one of which is a file system and by file system it's a time period when we also you know the database programmers the veteran programmers the researchers at the you know big labs in the us or in the west they you know started you know uh, creating complex mathematical structures so that they can come up with a you know really optimized way of fetching the data or solving you know queries so in during those period of time there is a sort of a data structure came by because we used to have you know linear way of accessing data so the researchers what they thought like what if we instead of doing this linear searches or linear you know inserting and deleting what we try to do is how about like breaking down into half and once we do it in a half uh, there is some you know computation which would be done so for example if you want to find a particular number you just compare it from the top top level and from the top level if that value is quite you know on the lesser side of that level we go on the left side and pass it on the right side so in this manner you you're kind of eliminating a particular you know entire half section of uh, searching space or you know half of entirely space so it is now getting down you know every time it's getting half at every step so this kind of started you know resolving such a one of the big problem which is you know searching and uh, fetching out the data and inserting now on the other side what this structure also does is you know provide a sort of a security there was one problem starting with you know the once the computer started getting improved on a daily basis was is that the, a lot of users started you know contributing into the same machine which means that a lot of programmers are also doing the work on the same machine so there is a problem started arising which is now since programmers for for example if i'm programming i'm writing a code or a logic there are highly probable chance that i'm going to use a particular variable name or maybe particular you know function which is which might be already there in some other file as is if there's a linear structure in the file if there is no hierarchy it might you know i might you know start conflicting with other code so with uh, earlier versions of programming languages also c and afterwards we started having namespaces i think it's four times i don't remember exactly but uh, a namespace is the same concept as file and which is pass if i say is a directory also so a file is also named as directories and so these namespaces you know started uh, you know resolving the problem with conflicts and now afterwards programming uh, languages also try to introduce some re real world you know uh, logical sense of building software which is you know having inheritance hiding some sort of data so that nobody else other than you know specific permission could access modify it so these sort of things also you know getting reflected into the file system so once there is a hierarchy is being created a user is being segregated from the other file structure so if they had to access a particular file they have to you know kind of request it from the top side it's like you know you're asking your parents that can i have this or can i go into my friend's house so it is up to their permission and since you have that permission kind of permission to live in their houses so you can ask for certain other privileges that hey can i do it for a particular time period so it may be for just one night so it's uh, you you know uh, there are two things in linux also so if you have multiple users you might also starting having conflict that who might be you know in 
a control or in an authoritative position so that they can make sure that no conflict might occur. So you can think of yourself as you know you and your siblings, your cousins are there, and maybe some you know elder is there to make sure that everything is gone right. That uh, if they are you know coming up with some sort of treats, so you you know you are uh, dividing it equally among each other. So this is kind of way of thinking that hardware resources are there so that no one process or one folder or one user started acquiring all of the resources, the treats from which is being provided by the parent. In this case, it's a Linux kernel. So Linux kernel is kind of the controlling part, which has, uh, you know, kind of have profound control over the entire operating system in this manner, in this hierarchical structure. And some of the problems I think you, I think we could, now we understood that what sort of the problems which are going on and what they're trying to solve. And what this file system is solving is that, you know, no other person with no privileges or no permission should not access there is a clear defined boundaries among other users, other processes, other folders, other you know files itself. And now I think we got a pretty clear picture about that why these file system exist, how they came up with an idea of you know tree like structure, tree like means the branching, why they divide it. It's just not the two division. It could be on multiple labels, but what my point is that they you know started dividing the code. And let's try to move to uh, the part of you know try to get an idea of is my mouse going yeah okay so let's try to get here and let's try to see that a little bit by a pictorial representation which i would like to do so in earlier days we you know had a file system somewhat like you know the files are just being presented at a, at a place like this and so any 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 process any user can access it which is you know not not quite good in design so the idea is like that why not divide this file uh, system into you know like this structure so one a folder is there then another file folder is here and you know you you might could have another file folder here so you can have you know multiple file folders and these file folders can consist of multiple files so this is the very idea and like then there could be certain privileges for example this is user one user two and user three so they cannot directly access this user one space so they have to go through this if this is if this particular file structure allows it only then they can go and this is a very similar you know structure is being followed in google cloud platform or me any other major cloud platform which is they just had implemented the same thing so for example there is your organization here okay and this organization you can have you know multiple projects which are going on Okay, so there could be a folder for this project, this project, and now this project could consist of multiple users which are working on a particular project, and these multiple users could, you know, combine all together, and maybe, 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 maybe they could have, you know, multiple applications that they are working on together. So this is a very same structure which is being followed. Now, there are certain file systems which are being implemented over the period of time. During 1991, when the Linux were, is being, you know, being created, the prime period was also pretty similar that at the 92 like they introduced a file stu uh, structure system called EXT this is a file system management or you could say the file system type which is means you know extended file system and EXT ENDD oh yeah I'm right okay so extended file system is there oh sorry for my bad writing okay so we started having uh, these sort of you know file systems it, it kind of i think it has a uh, around like uh, 2 gbs of supportive space so that you can you can have a, a max file of size 2 gbs which is like quite quite like it's a quite big number at those times but you know in 92 uh, during 91 92 we started having you know, quite a good amount of computation so they started you know moving quickly with i think in 93 they uh, introduced ext2 then ext3 is there and i think ext3 did one thing if you remember in old you know operating systems like windows xp and maybe earlier version i think in windows 7 too sometimes this occurs like uh, uh, it, it wasn't the all the time because uh, it was a relatively new operating system but sometimes it, it might occur that uh, once your system got crashed you know or cra sgd crashed or uh, maybe once the system got crashed maybe it got turned off or maybe something might occur maybe the file just got corrupted it just you know got shut down and you won't be able to recover the data or the work which you have done so in ex3 what they you know introduce is a kind of a log which means it's kind of maintain a log also that what file is being updated by the user it also being you know registering those changes the same thing you could see right here as you can see that it was syncing 
see if I write anything it started to sync this is what exactly this you know ext3 has introduced into the cloud also into because cloud is the same it's just your system it's nothing different cloud is exactly the same thing as system but it's just the case that it's being hosted somewhere in a remote place so anything you write here is being synced all together so this is what this log maintaining is so it's kind of maintaining a log over there then there is ext4 it's quite advanced it's i think kind of support i think 20 tvs of file system or the file size uh that would be uh i think it is but so these are some of the file systems here and what else am i missing let me see um i think i pretty much have covered everything here there is this you know definitions here you could read and did i miss something let me see this uh, quite quickly i don't uh, remember exactly that i might be missing anything but uh, still let me see through just my notes maybe am i missing something or not so you know uh, in next video or uh, like uh, i'm going through the, my notes but in next video we'll you know try to look into the you know internals of the how file system is being you know is there in linux and how what other things are there i think that's a pretty much into this video i don't remember exactly that if i'm missing something or not and uh, i think there is this uh, boot thing i could also explain can i let me see where is this my loading thing is going on man what's going on stay here is it working yeah it's it's working it's just kept scrolling why there's something going on man is it still oh it's still something is going on wait um uh, why it is crawling i don't you, you, do you got any idea around this did it stopped yeah yeah i think it, it kind of stopped no i think something is going on okay uh i think that's for this video uh next video we'll you know try to look at you know boot is there then there are you know etc folder is there oh that's my old notes of the tsa wait i have to come to this display something is uh, going on with this so uh next video is going to be all about you know these sort of the problems which uh, occurs at the behind the scenes but i'm not gonna you know edit these out because uh, it's kind of give a really good not just touch but you can get you you actually got a pretty good idea about where how these things are being getting recorded or so the problems are there so this is just you know you see uh i don't know where this is going now i'm not gonna even open that my note so these are the problems but in next video we'll try to you know get an idea about the file structure what other files there and how the conflict has been resolved uh, privileges are there a concept of privilege which is being introduced in linux and there is a concept called a pseudo user uh, which uh, means exactly like a, a super user is there it's it's super user and pseudo is like uh, taking some of the powers from that super user hey super user can you give me certain powers for a while so that i can work on this uh, you know particular thing that which i am trying to do and super user be like yeah okay fine if you have the pro you know proper credentials so you can think uh, this example i just remembered it you can think this example in a way that if you're trying to install windows operating system what is that is you need to put a particular uh, credential so that it's you know started to you know getting exec become executable and you know you started getting those privileges hey yeah okay so you can work uh, okay so i remember something uh, there is something also called in file system in this files is that there are certain thing called x r w or maybe one of the flags these flags actually have the operating system to determine what sort of the privileges a file have or what sort of the privileges a person might could have. So for example, there is X flag which is being there, I'll show you. And that X actually means executable, that whether this file have the privileges to execute in the system or not. Then there is write privileges, that whether the file is being able to, you know, being written by a user or not, or, is it, or if it might could be a, just a readable file. Okay, if you just remove the readable, you know, read flag, so it just might remain, uh, you might be, you know, just set the X flag, which means executable, and the write privileges, W and not the read, so nobody can read it, what's inside there, but you can you know, execute and write with the help of this file. So these are certain things we'll see into the, you know, next video, we'll try to, uh, I'm looking at my notes, so there are these folder structures we'll see, and I think that's for this video.